here it finally is the brand new DJI Action 2. Now what's really interesting about this is it comes in two pieces the camera itself and the front touchscreen module. So the idea is that you could use the camera completely by itself it has 32 gigs of built-in memory as well as its own display. If you attach it to the extra module you get extra battery life you can put in a micro SD card. We also get a USB-C cable. So this looks like the magnetic lanyard so they're going that route of the Insta360 Go. We also get this little tripod adapter quarter inch on the bottom sticks right onto the camera feels pretty secure this is supposed to be a reusable adhesive and we also get that piece that allows this to mount onto any pre-existing gopro mounts or the original osmo action feels pretty good with the head yeah mounts on nice i gotta say so far i'm liking this modularity let's go ahead and fire this thing up Really good workout, actually. It really is. Though. Just come here instead of the gym. <laughs> We've only been here for like 10 minutes. How you doing, Sam? Can we cut to the next scene? <laughs> yes. You feel like Iron Man? Yeah. So I could just like stick it onto anywhere. Yeah. Hey, there you go. What? Dude! Here, you might actually be into this. This is called a snap mount, so it's designed for GoPros. And it basically takes the GoPro and gives it that same type of idea of being able to magnetically oh, attach man. it. That's like stretching out your shirt. Yeah, I know. It is heavy. But feel this magnet, though. It's pretty strong. This feels yeah, very wrong. Shy. There's probably children around. <laughs> that does feel a little bit heavier than the Insta360 Go 2 though, right? Yeah. Like you feel it a little it, bit more. But it's still a lot more low profile than that. This magnet's pretty serious on here though. It's like, boom. It is drooping your shirt quite a bit. But it does have a slot here. So you're supposed to put like a lanyard around it and it'll hold it in place so it's not drooping as much. But if you do really like the magnetization mounting options, then this is kind of cool, huh? Yeah, that is pretty sick. I do like that you could adjust it though. Yeah. What are the frame rates on this thing? Okay, so you get 4K at 120 frames per second and 2K at up to 240 frames per second. And it's impressive because like you can get all those frame rates even when it's detached like this. So this little thing will give you 240 frames per second in HD. One big downside though is no replaceable lens cover. So if you crack it, you have to send it into DJI Care. But check this out. This is a macro lens that you can what? magnetically attach to this. Shut up. So if you can magnetically attach this, I'm sure that they'll eventually put out some sort of magnetic protective cover if you're gonna put this in some dangerous situation, right? Or maybe someone aftermarket will do it. But check this out, regular lens. Macro lens. Whoa. Hi. Oh, I can see my own eye. Really? Yeah. It won't focus anything more than like a foot away, right? Like yeah, it's not in focus, but then I get really focused. close. You could probably get all the earwax in there. Oh, yeah. By the way, Sam, where have you been lately? I haven't seen you around. Oh my God, bro. Where do I begin? I was hanging out, playing Super Smash Bros. When all of a sudden, the Midnight Munchies kicked in. Ninjas appeared, and then I was like, whoa, stuff's getting real. But then I remember that in my pocket, I had the Dylan whistle, the emergency Dylan whistle. But then I wasn't paying attention, and I didn't see the wet floor sign, and I slipped and I hit my head. And then they felt bad, and now I'm here. So you weren't just working on some Netflix show? What? All right, so you are now listening to audio from the built-in microphone on this camera. And I notice it doesn't handle wind very well, but it does have better audio once you plug in the front-facing display module because there are three extra microphones in here. All right, so now we have the front-facing monitor display on, and you will still probably notice a little bit of wind noise here, but hopefully it sounds better. All right, once I pick up a little bit more speed, you're definitely gonna hear a lot more wind noise. So it's definitely not perfect for windy environments, but it's definitely pretty decent considering it's an action cam microphone. I still feel like the best microphone for when you're in a windy place is this wireless Go 2, especially when you have this fuzzy thing on it. So if I'm moving, here's the audio from the Action 2, and then here's the audio from the Wireless Go. We are also doing a giveaway with this Action 2, so details down there in the comments. A quick word from our sponsor. Dylan, I need your deep voice again. Are you tired of sucking at your job because you have no organizational skills? That's why you should sign up with Monday.com. What's really special about Monday.com is how customizable it is. So we use the video production template, but that's just a starting off point, and you can customize it from there as much or as little as you want. Now, Monday.com isn't just another cookie cutter project management website. It's super flexible, so you can adapt it to your workflow and meet your needs. And there's tons of powerful tools in there that you can also utilize, like 
like integration with Dropbox or Google Drive or Monday Docs. Now, when we're filming these videos, we're always on the go. So what's great is they have an app. So even when we're out in places like this, we can still be connected. Like that's what Dylan's doing, I assume, right, Dylan? Yeah, yeah that's right? totally what I'm looking at right now is Monday. Are you sure you're not texting yeah. or on Tinder? Of course or? I'm not. Why you want to see the yeah, screen? Yeah, let me see the screen. Yeah, let me see the screen. Give me a second. No, no, no let me see no. it now. Yeah, no, just doing? wait, wait. Now, one of the things I personally struggle with a lot is when I have too many projects going on at once, I tend to just go, ah, what am I supposed to do? I end up getting nothing done. But with the help of Monday.com's organization, I'm able to prioritize everything, tackle one thing at a time, and in the end, be way more productive. Like the sunset at the end of the day, we're all looking for a job well done. So remember to click the link below and get your dream started today. Thanks so much for Monday.com for sponsoring this episode. And how do the colors of this sunset look? So this is decent like right here, which gives us a slightly flatter image here. And then if we put the color into normal, we don't have to do any sort of color grading at all. But I have noticed that if you take the decent like and just boost some saturation, it gets pretty close to the normal color. So pretty easy to grade. All right, so now that we've had a chance to put some mileage into this camera, my favorite feature hands down is the magnetic latching system. How easy it is for me to switch from here and with gloves on, which makes everything 10 times harder, I can throw it onto my helmet and it's on there good. I can go ahead and release it from there, throw it onto my chest mount pendant and throw it back onto here. Oh shit, here, let me try again. You're not really supposed to just like drop it on there, but you're supposed to, you know, gently place it on there, I'm sure. And once in a while, sometimes I'll throw it on here and the levers won't fully close in. So I like to just run my fingers over and just make sure that the fit is secure before I go and do anything crazy. Just make sure you don't accidentally bump one of the release levers. Now that magnetic pendant, I'm sure it can come off if you swipe it hard enough, but it's actually on there decently. I had our friend Oscar wear it while he was mountain biking and it stayed on fine. So I think as long as you don't smack it into something, it'll stay on pretty good. Like when I took it out for a ride, I love that I was able to quickly mount it on the three footed monster, but I can also throw it on the tank because it is magnetic. And also I can quickly throw it onto my helmet, of course. And of course I have my magnetic pendant. Now on a typical ride, I might switch the camera angle once, maybe be twice on a ride, but here I had so much flexibility and I got this shot of myself eating this beef jerky, which turns out it's actually a terrible idea trying to eat while you have a helmet on because the helmet squeezes your face really tight. So when you're chewing, you're like trying your best not to eat your own cheeks. But what's also cool is that you can control and view the camera on the app, but big deal, the GoPro can do that, right? But the GoPro, when you hit record, the preview is no longer available on your phone, but the action too keeps feeding you that signal. So you can monitor the shot while you're recording, which is actually really Really need to be able to do. Now, my biggest complaint with the original Osmo action was that the field of view wasn't quite wide enough, at least if you wanted it to be stabilized and had Rocksteady turned on. But check out how much wider the Action 2 is. This is the ultra wide option, and this does have Rocksteady on. So this is still stabilized and it is really, really wide. Yeah, the lens here says it's a field of view of 155 degrees, and it's actually even wider than GoPro Super View, which I was really impressed with. So here we have the GoPro and Action 2 at the same distance. And and both Sam and I are right at the edge, but if we look at the action two, look, we're clearly in frame there. Now the edges are super distorted and my ear looks huge right here. And yes, my ears may be slightly above average, but you know, let's not draw attention to it. But the view is insanely wide. Like check this out. I'm like a foot away from Sam's face and I'm still getting both his arms in frame, which is really impressive. Like when I have it mounted on my helmet, it's almost covering my entire field of view of what I can actually see with my eyes. Even if I go into D-Warp, which is the tightest field of view on the Action 2, it's still wider than the original Action with Rocksteady. So all those complaints I had about the Osmo Action not being wide enough, no longer a problem in here. Now stabilization in the ultra wide view does pretty decent, but if you're gonna be doing big moves and big shifts, then I would definitely recommend going into wide because you're gonna get more stabilization out of that. Now there is a 4X digital zoom that you could use, but I personally would avoid it. I don't think it looks that good. And if you have a phone that has a telephoto lens, then you're probably much better off using that. Now, I had a lot of fun with the hyperlapse feature. I usually had it between 15 to 30 X speed, but if something interesting happens, you can bring it to one X mode. So it's just like a regular video clip and then you can re-enter hyperlapse. I feel like one of the reasons why we're able to get such a wide image out of this camera is because it has a pretty large sensor. It's one over 1.7 inch, which is larger than the one over 2.3 inch in the GoPros. So that's actually pretty surprising. This little camera has a larger sensor than the GoPro. Now, are you guys ready for the pricing here? Now, this setup right here with the front display module is gonna cost you around 
520. I mean, it's up there with the GoPro Hero 10. Now, if you're trying to save some money, you can always get it with this module, which does not have the front facing display or those extra microphones, but it does give you the micro SD slot and extra battery life. Now, this setup will send you back closer to 400 bucks. Now, it's not a cheap action camera, but if you think about it, the 4K 120 that this little thing does, it's really impressive because we just got that in the GoPro Hero 10. So the fact that we get it in this little tiny thing, it's really impressive. Now, does this camera overheat? I did some room temperature tests and it overheated around 28 minutes while recording in 4K 30. Now to put that into perspective, I did the same type of test with the GoPro Hero 10 at 4K 30 in the high bit rate. And I got about 10 extra minutes out of it at 38 minutes. Now the GoPro does seem to last longer if you have the screen auto shut off after a minute. And here I got a little over an hour of 4K 30. So the Action 2 is not looking too good, but there is a setting on here to adjust the auto temp shut off mode, just like we do in the Sony A7s. So I tried it again at the high temp sensitivity and I let it run and it went for an hour and 37 minutes before the battery died. So maybe if I just kept hop swapping these batteries, it'll just keep going. It did feel really hot to the touch, but I mean, it kept recording. Is it good to constantly run the camera this hot? I don't know. I mean, they give us the option in the menu to allow it. And of course we had to do a high temperature run over hundred degrees and they both shut off back to back right around 17 to 18 minutes. So basically high temperatures and action cameras don't mix too well. Now, if you're wondering if this is waterproof, the answer is yes. As long as it's just the top head right here, I think it's waterproof up to 10 meters. You attach it to the module then you have things that are exposed like the USB-C port, micro SD card. So you're gonna want to go ahead and throw it into a dive case. Once you get it into here, it's waterproof down to I think 60 meters or maybe was 50. I don't know. I'll put it on the screen. All right, got a brand new FPV drone. I think it's called the iFlight Evoke or something like that. This one's the dead cat version, which has the arm stuck out to the side, so it's not gonna be in the shot, but love how easily I can just snap this on. Ooh, this is a good thumbnail opportunity, huh? How's that? Anyways, I thought the stabilization out of this might be pretty interesting because it has such a wide field of view that it has a lot of room to stabilize. Let me get this all plugged in, and we are in the wide field of view. How does that look? And let's go for a little flight. You know what, this is actually flying pretty good. It's definitely heavier than the Insta360 GO 2, but definitely lighter than the Hero 10. Now, one thing I am curious about is if I crash and lose this drone, how much is it gonna cost me to replace this camera? Now, with the battery combo being $399, will I be able to replace just this camera head for maybe a little bit less? Not sure. Now, one thing I am noticing with the stabilization is if I'm doing a sudden move and change directions, or if I do a roll, it seems to do this quirky little jump. And what's cool is when I'm done with a flight, I can go ahead and pop the camera off, throw it on here, and down Download the media off of here onto a micro SD card so that when I send it back out, I'm not risking that footage. I haven't been able to test that transfer because it's not in this beta firmware yet, but I think by the time you guys get your hands on it, it should have that built in. It's also pretty interesting flying with this ultra wide field of view. You're not gonna get as much stabilization, but with it being so wide, it looks like you're going really fast. Oof, I messed up pretty good. This is why I saved the FPV stuff for the very end of the video. <laughs> but I was trying to dive that thing, which is what, like 60 feet up there. And on its way through, it must have just smacked into the camera. And you can see that the battery got all bashed. And so it was a pretty hard impact. The drone still made it through, so I was able to come back here and land. But a few seconds later, I hear like a on the pavement. I'm like, that's probably the camera. So this took like a 60 foot fall here. <laughs> Display bag here is cracked, but surprisingly this lens is still okay, but it kind of split apart and uh, I don't think it's working. I was able to download some of the footage during that flight, but the video feed cuts out pretty early and the rest is just a deafening sound of the camera falling. <laughs> You know that action camera that I've been really excited about? You have a big old thing in your teeth. You broke it. Uh, you, she already knows, she already knows. <laughs> you gotta get more creative. It's <laughs> the same line. So if you plan on putting it into a lot of dangerous situations, I definitely would recommend getting that DJI care. You get it for one or two years and I think your first replacement's like, 20 bucks or something like that. Oh, is that like Apple Care? Yeah, kind of the but same DJI thing? actually just gave this one to me, so I don't think I'm allowed to get like DJI Care out. <laughs> I, I don't know. But, well, I mean, you finished 
making the video, right? I think, I, I think I'm gonna have to go ahead and buy one now because I did really like it. A great little camera. Like I yeah. like that you're able to just take it on your rides and- Yeah, the magnetic stuff. I fun. love not having this giant thing in my face, that's for sure. <laughs> well, I guess this video is pretty much done because I can't really film much more. I wonder if I could just use my feet as a tripod. Oh, Peter, stop. Oh my God, I'm trying to finish off this video. <laughs> How do you you know what? <laughs> How do you like it? Huh? <laughs> but anyways, I have to go cry myself to sleep now that I don't have that camera. So uh, yeah, see you guys on the next one and links in description and all that good stuff. All right, bye. Cry yourself to sleep? Yeah. You can go stay in the guest room tonight. <laughs> Cry yourself to sleep in there.